Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, come on in. Hey, it is Breakfast Bites with Bridget. Listen, 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 listen. We have been coming in all month long uh, trying to uh, enlighten everybody on some Black history facts. But in doing so, we're able to share leadership legends by some uh, unsung heroes, people that you might not have ever known about. And so that's what we are doing today. Today, we are uh, helping you understand more about several people. And today's person that we're highlighting is Elizabeth Hobbs Keskley. Listen, she was a master seamstress and her story is just absolutely simply marvelous. But let me go backwards just a little bit. Maybe you don't know who I am and this is your first time watching. My name is Bridget Brown Jackson. I am uh, a behavioral wealth strategist and the founder of Exponential Edge Adventures, where I help organizations uh, attract and develop their uh, talent, keep their talent, therefore keeping their profits and, and increase in productivity. All right. And so what we've been doing is taking leadership legends and finding out what we can get from them, garner from them, from their leadership. So today we're talking about Elizabeth Hobbs Kelsley. Listen, uh, they called her uh, Lizzie, you know, and so let's talk about Lizzie. One of the reasons why I picked her is because uh, she ended her career in uh, at Wilberforce University in Ohio. Well, I have an affinity for that because my daughter actually graduated from Wilberforce University and she was Miss Wilberforce University. And so I uh, always have an affinity for that, uh, that, that, that school down there in Ohio, not that other school, because I am maize and blue. If you all know about that, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So let's get into this and let's talk about her. Uh, she was not just any old seamstress. She ended up being the seamstress to one of our first ladies of the United States, all right? And so let's talk a little bit about her and leverage her. What made her so uh, powerful and impactful was she wrote a memoir um, and she did it like, again, think about she was a woman and she was a black woman. And we're talking about, listen, look at when she passed away in 1907. So we're talking about in a time that uh, racial... Uh, disparities were extremely, extremely wide. In addition, there was a gender gap. And she was able to write her own memoir called Behind the Scenes or 30 Years a Slave and Four Years in the White House. Um, now, her writing that got her in a little bit of trouble because the press did not like it. They did not like her talking about First Lady Lincoln. Uh, they did not like whatsoever uh uh, you know, just just the the I guess they said it was a tell all. And so she told stuff that should have been secret. And what she was trying to do was come to First Lady Lincoln's defense because of what had happened with her after the assassination of her husband. So listen, 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 listen. Let's get into this. Let's get into this, because I want to go into her attributes as uh, her leadership qualities. Now, she was born enslaved in 1818. Right. And in in Virginia. And if we know the backdrop and the story of Virginia during that time and everything, we understood. But she believed that she was not going to stay that way. Um, she actually was interracial. Uh, her. Uh, I, I hate using this word because I don't believe that they owned. But let me put it in air quotes. Uh, the master uh, impregnated her mother and therefore she came about. Now, her mother was allowed to be married to a man on another plantation, and she never even knew that that was her, uh, that wasn't her father until later on in life. And so she 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 started out with a lot of, of hardships. And so what was known as her father was shipped off uh, on the other side of the country, and she never got a chance to see him again. And so she wanted to make sure that she bought her um, she bought her her freedom as well as her son's freedom and then the ability to be able to help maintain and take care of her mother, which her mother was a seamstress and taught her how to be a seamstress. And therefore, that's where she came up with the trade. So she was an entrepreneur. You all listen. She was allowed to travel and help uh, some of the prestigious women of those times to have their uh, dresses made. 
in their clothing. And so she was an amazing seamstress that became known and popular. Therefore, she caught the eye of um, Lady Lincoln. OK. And so in doing that, she kind of befriended her and they, you know, uh, she became, you know, not just her seamstress, but kind of her companion that traveled with her and did certain things with her and everything. So let's talk about her leadership qualities as we at the five minute mark. Listen, she was able to show resiliency in the midst of adversity. Like she was taken advantage of. That's how she got impregnated and had her son. Um, it was not uh, by choice. Uh, again, she was uh, pressed upon and you know, from it, she took care of her son. Her son went into the military and uh, unfortunately was killed. And so she had a lot of hardships, but despite all of that, she continued moving forward. She continued persevering and she continued uh, to do her pursuits for her entrepreneurship, right? So she had a pursuit for excellence. If you saw the garments that she made, they were absolutely stunning, magnificent and breathtaking, right? And so she... Uh, was able to dedicate her hard work in crafting her skill, right? And then definitely last but not least, uh, she had a commitment, again, a commitment to advocacy and advocating. And so we see that at the end, more at the end of her life. Well, she advocated for people, period, because again, she advocated for Lady Lincoln and she had an advocacy for social change and social injustice. And she used her voice and everything. And again, she went on to be on Wilberforce's campus as uh, one of the, the teachers for a seam, being a seamstress, right? And so she ended up back in Washington, D.C. area, and that's where she passed away. But she made a lot of a difference of a change. Right. And so what can we learn? What can we learn from that? One, we can learn that be unimaginable in your in your zest and be resilient. OK, as a leader. Number two, pursue excellence in everything that you do. Doesn't mean it has to be perfect. One of my favorite things that I love to tell people in my coaching is perfect, uh, it's better to be uh, done than to be perfect. So, but pursue excellence in the midst of it. And then whenever you can advocate for change, advocate for change, advocate for change and social injustices. What are the causes that you uh, put up on a pedestal? She had a cause and a champion for freedom. And so what inspires you? How do you help eradicate equality? All right. So it has been my time today. Again, my name is Bridget Brown Jackson. I am a behavioral wealth strategist. I love talking about behaviors that can help you be wealthy. And I'm not talking about just financial wealth. I'm talking about wealth in every aspect of your life. I'm the founder of Exponential Edge Adventures, and it has been great to be here with you today as we again share with you about Elizabeth Hobbs Kethley. You all have a great and a marvelous, marvelous day.